everyone who dives into novels, trilogies, series, we all want to escape mm-hmm. sort of reality. I mean, I mean, we're we're indulging in all these amazing stories by all these authors, and sometimes we get so fixated on on what again like we keep using the word expectations but people need to realize like fuck expectations like live your life how you want it to be you know don't get blinded by things so i mean personally that's what i do i read all these books because i'm like i need to enter another dimension another universe i cannot be here i cannot be here on earth right now In this episode, we will be covering some of our shout outs and having a conversation with our special guests. Just a reminder, there are some trigger words in this episode, so if you can't listen, it's okay. And if you like what you're hearing so far, well, stay tuned for more. (laughs) Oh my, that's random. Welcome to Oh My Random. My name is Eddie, your host, and here's a safe space where we can ask all the random questions and digest them. Join me every Monday for new episodes. Before we jump right into today's episode, here's a little reminder. This podcast is made for educational and entertainment purposes. These are my personal opinions and research. However, this is not provided for specific legal advice. Okay, welcome. Welcome to Oh My Random. My name is Eddie. Uh, I'm so excited to have you as our guest um, here today, Gracie. If you could please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, first off, thank you for having me. I'm so excited and nervous and so blessed to be here. Um, I'm Gracie, Gracie Media on Instagram and Gracie Ruiz. I'm the best, no, I'm joking. (laughs) Um, I I was going to try and mimic Bretman Rock, but we can't. Like, he is on a lane. He, Mm. she, they are on a lane of their own. Um, I'm basically just a creator. I'm a photographer, filmmaker, writer. Um, Yeah, a lot of things. A lot of things, yeah. yeah, I have my own Etsy store. I write poems. Um, I sing as a hobby. I play video games. I there's just a list. To go. <laughs> it's okay. That's one of the things that I love about you, because I also feel like I'm on that level of creativity. I tend to dabble in dance and everything because I can't settle with one thing. For example, in high school, I started with like playing guitar and singing. And then I started doing podcasts and then I started doing like a lot of tiny writing on the side. I even started painting in like elementary school, <laughs> but it, it didn't that's go awesome. too, it didn't go too well. <laughs> that's one thing I wasn't no, that's too awesome. great at. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, I love that. We should all dive into, um, you know, multiple Mm-hmm. things because I mean we're not just meant to do or be one thing in our lifetime of course yeah that's totally that's a powerful thing like most people just tend to focus on one thing thinking this is my goal and this is it yeah sure all right so you mentioned that you have a photography uh page and you do photography pictures and stuff like that um could you tell me a little bit about how you got into the uh, business and what were some of the things that attracted you to it um some things that attracted me to photography i think it's honestly just the art of itself i know as corny as it sounds you know capture um the moment you're capturing a moment within time, you know? So that to me is just everything because I, I feel like, you know, time is our enemy in, in life. Mm-hmm. So um, I've always been a photographer per se. Um, my family has no need to take, you know, all the photos in the family ever since I was a little girl. And you'd see me with the camera. Back then it was, a, um, you know, we had the Polaroid camera. Yeah. <laughs> And I, and I take pictures of like a tree or a caterpillar or, you know, whatever fascinates me at that time. Yeah. And um, as I got older, when I um, initially met my husband, 
you know, I told him, I was like, you know, I, I do love photography. I don't know, maybe I can get into it. And he was the one who actually bought me my first camera ever, my professional camera. He Amazing. bought me my first set. Ah! Yeah, he gave it to me, he's like, start. You know, uh, you got this. Go ahead. Uh, so that's really awesome yeah, to fun. have a partner that yeah. support your dream 100. percent It changes yeah. a lot of things because, yeah. and and Definitely. for example, my parents starting off, they they're really not into like the whole artsy stuff. So um, I had to do everything during my own time in my own space. So I wasn't really allowed to be as creative as I wanted. And their their focus for me was to always, you know, focus on school, be the greatest students that you could be not necessarily the greatest artist that you could be so yeah that's awesome but funny you mentioned like how you capture everything in time because I used to think like that when I would take a picture I would like imagine someone like in the future looks back on this and then they would just be like oh this is what this used to look like during this time and that just fascinated me as a person <laughs> yes yeah there's just yeah. so much you can do you know with photography especially now that we're living in a world where um you know, it's just diversity. It's just what makes us as a community very strong. Mm-hmm. You know, we have cosplay, um, we have abstract, we have landscape, um, we have portraits, you know, we have so much things we can do with photography now, aside from, you know, just strictly how it was for, you know, um, taking photos for passports or taking photos back then for just fashion, you know, from the runway and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, that's that's why I'm so grateful to be in photography right now because it's just so there's just so it's expanded so much right and my ideas when I work with my models you know my ideas aren't taken to be okay this girl is crazy like why does she want me to pose like that why does she want why does she want me to wear elf ears with this lingerie piece like no it's like everyone is so open-minded because Mm -hmm. it's art no. Right, right, no. right. It's self as a, a of expression. That's really interesting. I now I kind of want to do a real photo shoot with you because, like, I imagine myself in the, with elf ear and the lingerie. Yeah, yeah, I want to see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun, and it's like you definitely escape into a world while you're, um, you know, on set and you know, working with um, the models and and whatnot. But when you see that finishing piece, it's just mm. remarkable. It's you know, especially when you're like, um, I'm not so great at photoshopping. I am like <laughs> learning how to do that. <laughs> I'm more of a, a more of a portrait individual, uh-huh, uh-huh. but um, uh, well, cosplay as well. But um, you know, it's it's very fun it's very fun and uh you can definitely like you said express yourself mm-hmm. very much i really like that uh okay so uh, these questions are going to be random just just <laughs> reason why we name our podcast okay. random <laughs> because we're, we're absolutely let's go, let's random. Go, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so uh in any direction that i swing does just you know take the uh, the conversation and, and just go with me here um okay. you're gonna go happy and then really dark and then happy and then really dark who knows maybe (laughs) i would try not to go too dark i'm I'm just kidding (laughs) no let's bring it come on (laughs) okay so growing up um what what inspire you or what makes you feel inspired to be the your best self um growing up i definitely um suffered with identity issues Mm-hmm. um and self-image body issues and whatnot I feel like we've all as mm-hmm. humans we all want to be better and we all want to be our better self mm-hmm. um yeah. but I believe right now what you know taking it's probably my family my husband and my daughter mm-hmm. um recently I've learned you know Grace um just you know give it all you got there, tomorrow's mm-hmm. not promised you know mm-hmm. yesterday is history so mm-hmm. um I definitely my life has changed completely in the last year um I've learned a lot I've gone through a lot of obstacles and um yeah it's just really changed me and I I'm better as far as you know accepting my image I'm better as far as dealing with my mental issues I'm I'm just doing a lot better you know, and I just have to remember that, we're, you know, like I said, never settle, 
and we're all human and it's okay to make mistakes and you keep pushing forward you know yeah and that's one of the things that young adults tend to struggle with even me um i'm only 23 but like that's a battle that i really have with myself um self-identity and i'm like how because there's no roadmap to tell you you know this is what you're supposed to do (laughs) where you're supposed to be and you're gonna be good so it's really hard to uh try to go through the steps and be like okay this checks this doesn't this is where i should be and like just being able to go through all it, it it's a mental thing that really it really checks you and you're like okay wow that was a lot it really is <laughs> I, I i feel like um not not so much because i no offense everyone that had that mentality as you know in the 50s and the 60s where you know you had to have your the husband and the mm-hmm. wife in the household and mm-hmm. have two kids by the age of, you know, 18, you had to be in college, you had to be moved up by your own property. I feel like um, this generation has, well, the last two generations have, um, you know, really eased off of, as far as expectations go. Mm-hmm. But we're dealing with a lot of mental issues. We're dealing with a lot of, you know, men need to act a certain way, women need to act a certain mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. which is unacceptable. You know, um, it's okay for a man to be emotional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's for okay sure. for yeah, it's okay for a man to be emotional. It's okay for a woman to be assertive and not, you mm-hmm. know, not call her, you know, the B word. I don't know if I can hear you. But <laughs> no, no, you could. It was just have to make sure we okay. say it's explicit. But yeah, you could definitely curse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just because she's assertive doesn't mean she's a bitch. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's that's what we need to teach the young generation um, right. and that's what i'll be teaching my daughter as well because you know you have to be yourself and the reason why um you just feel constricted um you you feel like you have to adapt you have to change yourself because your parents probably have these expectation or society oh my gosh does. you're like and, you don't know <laughs> my parents especially yeah, but and, I'll, I'll get to it when you're yeah. done <laughs> Yeah, your, your parents have these expectations for you, but they have to remember that um, they live their life and you weren't brought into this world um, to live their life for them. Right. So you have to you have to live your own life. You have to pick and choose your battles and you have to find out who you are in this life. Mm-hmm. So and that's so- where I stand on. I really like that point of view because definitely, like I said, my parents being uh, traditional African parents, they have a very assertive way of how they see genders and like what they should be playing. Um, Like Mm -hmm. I noticed towards the end of my uh, high school year going into college, my dad would say stuff like, you should already know how to cook and doing this because you're going to be married soon. And I'm looking at him like, I'm not thinking about marriage for another like five years. <laughs> so, like, sure, sure. Relax. Yeah. Like I'm thinking about how I'm going to make my money, dad, <laughs> not marriage. Yeah, um, I definitely, yeah, I definitely think like um, showing morals and, you know, all that. I don't mm-hmm. think our parents should relate it as to you need to learn how to cook because you need to please your husband, husband in the future. Right, right. No, you need to learn how to cook because you need to survive mm-hmm. period there's just a, a, yeah there's just a better way you know to say things and mm-hmm. it's just um you know some cultures as in your culture and as in my culture when i was you know being raised um by by my mom a single mother she was mm-hmm. just like you know you need to cook you need to clean mm-hmm. um because when you get married you have to please to your this. husband yeah yeah, yeah, you have to cook. You have to be a housewife. And I'm kind of like, well, I, I want to have a career too. Like, you know. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to be a housewife. <laughs> and that's something that I forgot to mention, by the way, guys. She's a new mom. Woohoo. That's so exciting. Hey. <laughs> how does it feel? I'm like, very excited. How does it feel like to be a new mom? I- I'm not trying to be dramatic and I'm not trying to be corny. <laughs> um, Let him hey, in. It's okay. Being a mom, being a mom ugh, I, if you're a mom, you know. <laughs> but being a mom, it does, it does have its challenges. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, when, when my daughter smiles at me and you hear those, you hit those milestones, it's mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. everything washes away. You know, all the stress, 
all the you know agitation frustration because we do get we're human we have to we have to realize we have to realize as mothers we are not we don't have a handbook on it we're trying Mm -hmm. to figure out we're trying to dissect another individual another soul Mm -hmm. and you know sometimes at the moment it might not be compatible and that's perfectly fine you know step away from the situation and come back and um reassess it but i freaking oh i can curse i fucking love (laughs) being a mom (laughs) i love i love my daughter so much and the 60 hours of labor i went through a lot of shit okay (laughs) but i i would do it in a heartbeat because it's just it's worth she it. has brought it's so worth it she has brought so much joy and happiness in my life and in my husband's life and it's just something you know um struggling with pregnancy as well I've struggled with mm-hmm. pregnancy and mm-hmm. just it hits different too you know when you lose children and then mm-hmm. you come back and you have your rainbow baby it's just like <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yeah. um so I, I, it's weird we're talking about kids because I've had this dream today and it's the most bizarre dream I've ever had. But I think my mind was just making things up based on the show that I watched before falling asleep, which was blind spotting. I don't know if you have seen it. Uh, it in conclusion, here's how I, I it, it's a really great show. It's a show about um, this woman who is struggling to raise a young man. Um, but because her, um, well, her man boyfriend at the time went to jail and, you know, it just happened. It just hit her family. So now she has to figure out how to raise him. And then she's talking to her boyfriend's mom about how it feels like to have this kid going off on his own, um, growing up without being able to control or like, you know, just raise him the perfect way as possible. So I, I was watching this. I finished like all five episodes in one night. <laughs> and then I went to sleep. Oh my goodness. Right. I, I was I really was in love with it. I went to sleep and I had a dream that I had a daughter. And then in the dream, I was trying to figure out, know. right? It's so weird. I was trying to figure out how to raise a daughter when I was having trouble struggling to find my own identity and not trying to make the mistakes that my parents made in the past. And in the movie, they mentioned something like um, kids are like a separate body with your heart in it. And they're just walking around with your heart and you're trying to figure out you're trying to figure out how to like yeah, best guide how, them. How do you work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You... <laughs> exactly. So that, that how can I help you? How can I yeah, definitely. How can I guide you and help you without being overbearing? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like being overbearing or um, stepping on your toes because you don't mm-hmm. want to do that either because you need them to find themselves and be their own exactly. person, their own, yeah. have their own individuality. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to create them. <laughs> it, I, I mean, you already made them. You yeah. Them, like, Personality-wise, you know? Yeah. You, you want them to figure it out. <laughs> so it was a very interesting, like, dream to That's have. It's beautiful. And it, was, it was like, ooh, I woke up and I, I was want like, it to happen now. <laughs> I woke up I and want I was it to happen happy. now. <laughs> and I was really happy, but I was like, wait, I've never been happy about a pregnancy dream. So this one is interesting. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> That's his sign. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay um you know, moving on with that question if you could have a billboard with anything on it what would it be a whole a billboard with just to yourself a whole your- billboard oh my goodness yes. um <laughs> i was so I excited definitely- about this question <laughs> I definitely think it'll be something motivational that can reach children or, Mm -hmm. you know, young adults. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really like, not per se, like self-centered or something that could promote my business, but more so help other people. Mm -hmm. I guess that's just the Libra in me. Um, (laughs) but (laughs) But I'd probably have, I don't know, something um something where you know we can all bring peace to our children or something where we can um reconstruct maybe some schools or Mm -hmm. um for different countries Mm -hmm. like haiti cuba all these you know small islands and you know it's just everything that's happening is just so devastating and Mm, something to that effect maybe maybe we can all gather together and do something like that 
That sounds good. Yeah, I get. I can see that billboard coming into picture. <laughs> humanitarian. Yeah. Some humanitarianism. There. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if I had to say that word, my mouth would just be like the the the. So <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this amazing episode. I appreciate you guys. As you've noticed, I did have to cut it up because this episode is very long. I decided to make a part two. So tune in next time at Oh My Random for part two of Say Yes to Creativity. 